Joy Lab. Hi, I'm Tanya. Welcome to this video, one of two videos in a series on what to do with leftover Dr. Pepper. Now, you know I hate to waste food. And even though this Dr. Pepper bottle probably only costs 99 cents, I don't want to just throw it down the sink. I don't want to let it go to waste. And you're probably saying, well, Tanya, we'll just drink it. We don't drink Dr. Pepper. We drink Diet Dr. Pepper. But you can't cook with diet beverages. No Diet Coke, no Diet 7-Up, no Diet Dr. Pepper. You have to use the straight stuff. Something about the sugar, the artificial sweeteners, doesn't work in cooking. I have a great recipe for pulled pork, which is basically put your onion and your pork in a crock pot, cover it with Dr. Pepper, and seven hours later you get this delicious pulled pork. That's how I ended up with leftover Dr. Pepper. In this video, we are going to cover Dr. Pepper chili. Let's get started. Most chili recipes have two stages. The first stage is where you brown the ground beef or ground turkey or whatever meat you're using, and then saute the vegetables. In this case, it's onions and garlic. Then the second stage is where you mix all the ingredients, the tomatoes and the beans, and the meat and vegetables all together and let it slowly cook to thicken and season and just get so incredibly delicious. Here's the first stage. Freezer Meals is all about saving money because you buy in bulk. Our recipe for Dr. Pepper Chili takes one pound of ground beef. This is three pounds. It's less expensive to buy three pounds as opposed to the one pound, but I don't need three pounds right now. And that's the one that I am going to saute for our Dr. Pepper Chili. These pounds I don't need. I'm going to freeze them. Now I could brown, I can brown this and freeze it cooked. Or I can freeze it raw and then in the future when I have a recipe that I need a pound of ground beef, I've got it in my freezer. I usually like to freeze them raw because I don't know in the future what kind of recipe I'm going to be doing. But you could just brown all three pounds and freeze a pound of cooked ground beef too. I have labels for my freezer container. Now, it is very hard to find labels for containers that go in the freezer. I don't know why. They just don't seem to sell them in the stores very often. In the description below, I have a link to these wonderful stickers. I found them on Amazon. The thing that is wonderful about them is they come off with water. Often, it's very hard to peel off the label. Mm, these look like they got peeled off pretty well. Sometimes they're sticker residue, but not with these stickers. That's why they are very good. In the description below, you can click on that link and get taken right to Amazon and buy these very stickers. If you do, I will get a few pennies in commission and it won't cost you any extra. So, thank you. These are actually the best labels that I have found in the store or on Amazon. One pound raw ground beef. One pound raw ground beef. Ooh, 
look at all of that ground beef goodness so none goes to waste. And then just pat it down. Flat to freeze. Blech. I save money with freezer meals and I save time because I have my one pound ready to go whenever I need it in the future. Now let's go. I'm gonna put this one on the stove to start browning. Be right back. Wash my hands. For the vegetables, we're going to just saute them in a little bit of olive oil. Two tablespoons. Close enough. <laughs> Teaspoon of salt. You didn't see that. <laughs> Teaspoon of salt. Oh my gosh. We're okay. Cumin, one teaspoon of cumin. Ooh, that's strong. Oh my goodness. A teaspoon and a half of chili powder. Just estimating a half because you can't trust me not to drop these measuring spoons. And a teaspoon of minced garlic. Yes, I use minced garlic. I don't chop up my own garlic. I know it doesn't take that much more time, but to me, I don't notice a difference in the final result. So there that's much faster than peeling and chopping my own garlic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and one diced onion. I'll dice it, I'm going to saute all this together and I'll see you in a bit. Jeez. All right, hopefully that's the last of me dropping things. <laughs> I wanted to show you this fabulous tool. If you are slicing and dicing a whole bunch of onion, I would recommend this handy chopper. This one is actually from Pampered Chef. Some big pieces left. If you have a picky eater, if you have someone who's like onions, ooh, I would. This handy chopper makes the onions so nice and tiny, smaller than I could unless I spend a lot of time with my kitchen knife. So that your picky eater won't ever see the onions. Look at how nice that came out. And you saw how fast that was. I'm all about making
making things so that even the pickiest eater will be happy with whatever you serve for dinner. That's why I'm showing you how to modify your own recipes, recipes that you know your family will already eat, into freezer meals. And I'll show you how to do the freezer meal portion at the end. But let's get going on this Dr. Pepper chili. I need to saute the onions and the garlic with those seasonings. I will be back. While the onion is sauteing, let me tell you again about this handy chopper. I told you it's from Pampered Chef. If you have a friend that sells Pampered Chef, call them up and buy one of these. It's just so handy, especially as I said, if you have a picky eater, if the recipe calls for diced bell peppers, if you dice up those bell peppers in your handy chopper, they're so tiny that your picky eater won't even notice them and you don't have to make a special dish just for them. If you don't have a Pampered Chef friend, I put a link in the description below to an Amazon purchase of a handy chopper that's similar to this. And I highly recommend that you add one to your kitchen toolkit. Now we're on to the simmer everything together so the flavors mold and meld and blend and become delicious. I have the sauteed onions and garlic with the cumin and chili powder seasoning. My pound of ground beef drained. Oh, heavy. Now I'm adding up one cup of beef broth. Twelve ounces of Dr. Pepper. Eight. Oh, Dr. Pepper just smells good. <laughs> Plus four. Twelve ounces. A can of 14 ounces of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Twenty-eight ounces of crushed tomatoes. Yeah, crushed tomatoes. <laughs> now the beans we're going to have to do something to before we put them in here. You see how saucy those beans are? All the liquid that's in them? We have to get rid of that liquid and rinse it all off the beans. You know that old saying, um, beans, beans, good for the heart. The more you eat, the more you, yeah. It's the liquid and the sauce that makes you gassy. <laughs> so do your family a favor and drain and rinse your beans. Let me get a colander for that. I'll take this to my sink and come back with drained and rinsed beans. 14 ounces of kidney beans and pinto beans drained and rinsed. Now, the next thing is, I'm gonna make sure I get the name right, chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. You don't wanna dump that entire container into your chili because you have to chop it up. It's not like diced green peppers. I'm not like diced green chilies that come in the jar already chopped up for you. And what am I going to use to chop up these Chipotle peppers in adobo sauce? That's right, my handy chopper, because I don't want to touch these things. Ooh. There we go. made quick work of that and I didn't have to touch them at all. 
Oh, wow. Those smell so good. I wish you were here in my kitchen with me right now and you could smell these wonderful chipotle peppers. Delicious. Now, what am I going to do with this jar filled with chipotle peppers in adobo sauce? I'm going to freeze them. I could throw them away, but I hate wasting food. You know that. How am I going to freeze these? I think what I'll do, I could do them in a freezer container. I think I'll do them in a baggie. always use freezer baggies. This is, actually I think a quart size would be better. This is a gallon size freezer baggie. A quart size freezer baggie. That is going to be the perfect size. I'll need to write on it what this is. It is Chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. Is that right? Yep. In adobo sauce. Then next time I need one or two, I can just go to my freezer. Now notice that the zipper part is blue. It has to be blue because that's the code for freezer. It makes a difference. These baggies with the blue zipper are a little thicker and they protect your food in the freezer. And it does, it is important, it makes a difference. Squeeze out as much air as I can. Now I'll mush it flat and put that baggie in the freezer so that next time I just need one pepper. Where is it? Where's the pepper? One, two, three, four. Looks like there's four left in there. So I think I'll freeze it like that. There we go. I'll be right back. Oh, I forgot the Dr. Pepper. The whole reason we're doing this recipe. Wait. No, I did the Dr. Pepper. Oh, I could grief. Good. I can edit that part out. <laughs> the other thing is I need tomato sauce and I only need two tablespoons. This is more than two tablespoons. Now I could just throw the rest in the trash, but that's such a waste. Here is my ice cream scoop. That's a tablespoon size. I love these ice cream scoops for cooking. And guess what? In the description below, I have a link where you can find these. I'll put my two tablespoons in the Dr. Pepper chili. Now I'm going to freeze the rest in little tablespoon size pellets. Then in the future, if I ever need tablespoon of tomato sauce. Easy cheesy. I wouldn't even need to thaw the frozen tomato sauce because it's just going in a recipe that will be heated on the stove. So put it in your recipe frozen and in no time it will thaw. Let me put these pellets in the freezer in this ice cube tray.
This Dr. Pepper chili smells so good. I can't wait. I'm going to take some for myself when I'm done recording this video. Because, you know, we have to reward ourselves for good work. Now, you could serve this Dr. Pepper chili for dinner tonight. Put it in the crock pot or keep it simmering on the stove. But I want to show you how you can make your life so much easier with freezer meals. You've made this Dr. Pepper chili, now freeze it. Here I have some containers. There's a link in the description below. Sometimes you can find these at your grocery store. This is my favorite container for storing uh, liquids because it has a screw top. You have to leave some space for the chili to expand upon freezing. So that's probably as much as I can put on. I'm not going to put the lid on until it cools. See how hot and steamy it is? Oh, mm -mm. That size container serves two, two and a half people. I would pull this out of the freezer if it was just my husband and I for dinner. But if I wanted to feed the whole family or company, I have a larger place to store my Dr. Pepper chili. And that's where the rest of this is going to go. You know, I should have doubled the recipe, right? If I'm going to all the trouble to make homemade chili, I should double the recipe so I have even more in the freezer. So that way, if a friend has a baby, I can easily pull out some Dr. Pepper chili, heat it up and bring it over to them, or even bring it to them frozen so that they can heat it up at their convenience. Someone's home from the hospital. Bring them a freezer meal. Bring them some Dr. Pepper chili. It is delicious. Mmm. It's hot. Mmm. <laughs> but yes, hot and delicious. Remember, this is a two-part video series on what to do with leftover Dr. Pepper. I am passionate about freezer meals. We can make our lives so much easier with freezer meals. I've developed resources, free and paid, and some video courses. Please look in the description below. Like, subscribe. That helps YouTube know to put my videos in front of other people who are interested in making their life easier with freezer meals. I'm Tanya. Thanks for watching. Joy Lab. Learning done right. Learn more with Joy Lab. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Visit us at www.joylab.biz. Thank you.